So we are working with the definition of the derivative. So we came up with what the formula was in our last video, and so let's actually use that formula here to start computing some slope of some tangent lines. So my first example is find the derivative of f of x equals 2x squared plus 3. And you can see that I actually have this derivative formula over here on the right. So the formula that we came up with is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now the notation that we use to represent derivative is f prime of x. So this apostrophe here is called the prime. f prime of x means the derivative of the function, which means one of those things that we've talked about in the last video, the slope of the tangent line, which is the exact same slope of the original equation, which gives us our instantaneous rate of change or our instantaneous velocity. So anytime we take the derivative of something, the notation that we use is f prime of x in function format. All right, we have the formula over here. I like to break this formula down into three parts. And hopefully once you separate it out into three parts, it's easier to tackle all at once. The first part that I look at is just the f of x plus h. That's part number one here in yellow. So to compute f of x plus h, I use the function that they gave us. If I would want to compute f of 1, I would just substitute 1 in for every place that I see an x. So I'd have 2 times 1 squared plus 3. So likewise, if I want to compute f of x plus h, I just substitute that in for every place that I have x. So this gives me 2. Instead of x, I'm using my new thing of x plus h squared plus 3. Now once I simplify this, that takes care of my first part of this derivative formula. So the first thing that I need to point out is I cannot distribute this square. That violates algebra rule. So what we have to do is we have to take this x plus h, and we have to write it out twice, and we have to FOIL it. So 2 times first, x times x gives me x squared. Outside gives me an x times h. Inside gives me an x times h. So together, that gives me 2x times h's. And last, h times h gives me an h squared. To simplify this further, I distribute my 2. That gives me a 2x squared plus a 4xh plus a 2h squared plus 3. If I could do anything beyond that to simplify, I would, but I don't have any more like terms in this part, so that takes care of my first step in simplifying the derivative formula. The second step is I like to look at this whole fraction piece right here. Now this whole fraction piece has its own name, and it is called the difference quotient. That's going to be the second step in computing this derivative formula. So I'm going to do this here. f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Well, this f of x plus h I simplified here, and that gave me this part there. So that's what I'm going to substitute in for this here. That gives me 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3 minus, then what I substitute in for my f of x is just my original equation. They told us that f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3. So that's what I need to substitute in here, 2x squared plus 3. And the denominator is just h. That's the easy part. OK, I have made one vast mistake here. And I'm hoping that you picked that out as I was writing this down. The vast mistake is that I have to subtract my whole f of x piece. 
the way I have this written here is it's only subtracting this first piece of 2x squared. So when I want to subtract my whole f of x, I basically have to take this negative through all of the pieces here. So whenever you write that subtraction in there, what you should do is put parentheses around it to note that you are actually subtracting every single piece in that function there. So really, this negative gets distributed through both of these pieces. That gives me 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3. Then when I distribute my negative, that gives me a negative 2x squared minus 3 all over h. And the great thing about doing that is we notice some things cancel out. So this 2x squared cancels out, and this 3 cancels out. So at this time, that simplifies to give me 4xh plus 2h squared all over h. And so you might think that we're on to the last part of our derivative, which is this limit as h goes to 0. And so that is the last step of this part here. I need to take the limit as h goes to 0. So now we have to apply our limit rule. So that's why, again, this is in the limit section, is we have to apply all of those limit rules that we learned before. Now, we know that this is a finite piece here where 0 is just a number. So we can do this by substituting it in. And that would give us 0 over 0, which tells us that we have to do more work, which means we probably weren't quite ready for this step yet. We need to do more work to get that h in the denominator to cancel out, so we can hopefully figure out what my limit of this guy is. Well, in this part, it's really easy. If you look in the numerator, notice that I have h's in both pieces left. So I can take my h out, and that leaves me with 4x plus 2h. And when I divide that by the h in the denominator, that h cancels out. So that means I can actually apply this limit as h goes to 0. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 4x plus 2h. We know that we just substitute this in for our h piece. And that gives me 4x plus 2 times 0, which gives me 4x. So this guy here is the derivative of our original function, f of x equals 2x squared plus 3. So the notation that we do when we're done is f prime of x is the answer that we came up with, which is 4x. So the derivative is 4x. And again, that gives us all of these things that we have here. The slope of our tangent line, or the slope over the original function, our instantaneous rate of change, and our instantaneous velocity. So now that we can compute the derivative of things, Let's actually apply it. So I have the exact same example here, f of x equals 2x squared plus 3. And we are going to apply it in part b. But before we get there, let's kind of take a step back and let's look at part a. What we want to do is we want to come up with the slope of that line. And we want to come up with the slope of that line of x equals negative 1. But before we use our calculus methods in part B, let's use our college algebra methods in part A, meaning we're going to estimate the slope of this secant line by using two points, x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 2. Or this is just another way the homework could ask this question. Find the rate of change from x equals negative 2 to x equals negative 1. So we're going to use our slope formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we know our two x values of negative 2 and negative 1, 
Well, we have to substitute those into our original equation to figure out our two y values. So let's first do f of negative 2. That gives me 2 times negative 2 squared plus 3, or 2 times 4 plus 3, or 8 plus 3, which gives me 11. So that gives me the ordered pair negative 2, 11. So I'm going to put in my 11 for my second y value. The same thing for my first y value, f of negative 1. I just substitute it into my equation. 2 times negative 1 squared plus 3, which gives me 2 times positive 1 plus 3, which gives me 5. So that gives me my first ordered pair of negative 1, 5. So I can substitute that in for my first y value. On the top, I get positive 6. On the bottom, these two negatives cancel out, giving me negative 2 plus 1, which gives me negative 1. So my secant line estimates my slope at the value x equals negative 1 to be this negative 6 value here. So that's my estimated slope. Now in part b, we can actually figure out what the exact slope is by using the slope of the tangent line or by using our derivative function. We found that the derivative, or f prime of x, is equal to 4x. So if we want to find the slope at negative 1, we just substitute that into our derivative equation. f prime of x equals 4x. And the notation we use is just the same as the notation that we used up here. f of negative 2 is when I substitute negative 2 in my original function to get out my y value. So f prime of negative 1, because here I'm looking at negative 1, is when I substitute negative 1 into my derivative equation, and that's going to give me my slope. So my actual slope at negative 1 is negative 4. So we can come down and answer part C then. If part A gives us an estimated value of negative 6, and part B gives us an exact value of negative 4, we want to know was our estimated value in part A a good estimation for our exact value in part B. And these are kind of open for discretion. Some people may think, yes, this is a good value, or some people may think, no, this is not a good value. And it doesn't matter as long as you explain it in correct terms. So at first glance, you might think, oh, well, there are only two digits off. So if that's the case, then you could put yes. Yes, it's a good estimated value because they are only two digits apart. So I think that is an acceptable answer. Another acceptable answer it might be no. Some people may think this is a bad estimation because if I think about this in percentages, Half of 4 is 2, and so if I add that, that gives me 6, so that tells me I am off by 50%. And that's a big way to be off. So that might be another acceptable answer. No, because we are off by 50%. So most of the time, these answers are in discretion. As long as you explain it correctly, then any one of them is acceptable. However, there are a few times where it's an excellent estimation, like when they come up to be the exact same numbers, and there are times when it just comes up to be a very poor explanation, and hopefully you can figure that out on your own. And so this ends my first example of using the derivative.